Thanks, Goose. All right, guys, now it's time to go to a galaxy far, far away. Bajo, the odds of a good Star Wars game are 3,720 to 1 against. Never tell me the odds, Darren. <laughs> The name's Han Solo. Maybe you've heard of me. The Empire would find your skills useful. Star Wars Commander is essentially Clash of Clans with a Star Wars skin. You'll be given a base where you build up troops, join squads, and battle other players. You'll collect credits and alloy, and can use the premium currency, crystals, to speed things up. After a short tutorial, you'll need to choose between the Rebel Alliance or the Galactic Empire, with each side giving you a different base and troops. I, of course, chose the Rebel Alliance because I always like to go for the good guys. Well, I went for the Galactic Empire, which gave me some pretty cool units, such as AT-ATs and TIE Fighters. Yeah, I have to say I was a bit jealous. The Empire troops are definitely a bit cooler. Mm. Buildings unlock at different HQ levels too, which gives Empire players an early game advantage with two unit transports and a factory. This means they can build bigger armies and make powerful vehicle units like ATSTs and hover tanks. Yeah, I found these vehicles particularly useful. Their attacks are powerful and they soak up a decent amount of damage. The Rebels, on the other hand, get a hero command earlier, allowing the enlistment of well-known characters including Han Solo, Chewbacca and Leia. Yeah, and they're pretty powerful too. For example, Han Solo can take out an enemy base pretty much by himself. Would you say that Han Solo can do it solo? <laughs> <laughs> Good one, Darren. <sighs> However, these heroes can't be used in campaign missions, only in PvP, which means you'll start to struggle as your tiny army can't compete with more fortified enemy bases. I do like that they've tried to put in a fairly fleshed out story campaign though. It does a decent job of guiding you through some attacks and defences, as well as building up your base. There are also special time limited campaigns you can participate in to unlock special units. A nice touch. Yeah, you'll also be visited by the likes of Princess Leia, Han Solo and Darth Vader, who are all adequately voice acted. And that little bit of dialogue is a nice addition to a mobile game. Mm. Failure will not be tolerated. Whilst it is nice to see all these familiar faces, especially the droids, the AI in the game is a bit broken. Yes, it's as useless as a womp rat in Beggar's Canyon. The troop movements just seem so random. I'd have guys attacking walls instead of walking around them, or walking right up to a target to fire, even though they have a ranged weapon. Well, they are stormtroopers, Bajo. Historically, they do have pretty bad aim. I still find it hard to believe that a stormtrooper would fire at a wall while someone else is firing at them. <laughs> It is hard to predict where your troops will attack or run, which is frustrating. And I found quite a few of these quirks. For example, you can build a research centre to upgrade your troops, but you can't research anything until you upgrade to level 2. Yeah, and you can only build a certain number of turrets across all turret types. You can swap existing turrets to different types, but it will cost almost as much as it originally took to build it. And there are some campaign missions you can pass, even if you've epically failed the battle. I mean, that's just weird. These things aren't game breakers per se, but there are areas where the game could have been refined or mechanics could have been better explained. And when put together, they all make for an underwhelming experience. But it's not all bad. The sound and the graphics are quite nice, and I just love the sounds of those classic lasers. <gasps> you too. <laughs> pew pew. <laughs> The more side-on perspective is nice, but it does make it a little bit difficult to see where things need to be placed. Mm, affirmative. The camera swings around to a more top-down angle in the edit mode, but the system is clunky. Buildings are placed along grid lines, creating a white no-build zone around them. However, it's not always clear where you can and cannot build, and it just feels unnecessarily messy. Yeah, and I feel like it's a bit of a common theme with this game. Things are always just so close to working, but it just doesn't quite nail it, so I'm giving it 5 out of 10. Yeah, it's pretty rough, but I think if you're a Star Wars fan, you still might get a kick out of it, so I'm giving it 6 out of 10. Well, that's enough intergalactic war. I'm off to a realm of whimsy! Oh, it's time to do a postcard with Goose! Bye! Bye. Bye. <laughs> wonder what they're going to talk about today. Mm, I wonder.